Hello and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Journalist Hangout. I'm Ayodili Uzubakun. Today on the program, President Mohamed Buhari finally appoints new service chiefs. Also on our lineup, Southwest governors and Bieti Alan leadership back Akiridolu oppose open night grazing, insist headers must register with governments as armed forces kill 158 bandits. Finally on the show, disquiet in the judiciary as politicians hijack appointment of appeal court justices. I'll be hanging out with Babajide Koladi, Otitoju, and Sam Ibimere. So if you're ready, let the hangout start now. Yes, at long last, President Mohamed Buhari has finally bowed to the pressure to relieve the service chiefs of the appointments. A statement from the president's spokesman, Femi Additional, said President Buhari has accepted the immediate resignation of service chiefs and appointments, appointed their replacements. Major General Liu Irabo is the new chief of defense staff, while Major General Ai Atairu takes over as the chief of army staff. Rear Admiral AZ Gambo is now the new chief of naval staff and Air Marshal I.O. Amao is now the new chief of air staff. Gentlemen, we've been clamoring for this in the last two, three years. So President Buhari has decided in his own time, the National Assembly, the both arm of the National Assembly, the past um, uh, kind of uh, motion that the president should, as a matter of urgency, do something about the service chiefs last year. And um, a lot of stakeholders in Nigeria, they've been pushing for, you know, the replacement of this um, service chiefs. And at the point in time, the presidency replied, saying that um, it's only the president that has the prerogative as a CNC to replace the service chief. Now, this is coming after so, so, I, I will not say, the crisis and insecurity across the country, and we've lost so many lives. Jide, is this coming to you as a surprise? I will not say that um, I'm surprised. I will just say that President Buhari has done what is right. Um, to people who have been goading the president that you cannot change service chiefs, you should not change service chiefs at this time, things will get worse if you change service chiefs, he has the power to not change them. We want to see whether the country will collapse now that the service chiefs are gone. Because we told the president the right thing to do was to let them go. It was affecting morale within the armed forces. A lot of people had their growth stunted. Mm. The president didn't look at all of these things. It could even affect the performance of the troops themselves. Mm. You can't keep looking at things in your own way. You've got to look at issues holistically. He said, even, he, even if... You might have access to information that you don't have. And let him tell us the information. <laughs> because they are mystifying these things as if uh, we have never seen another commander-in-chief in the history of our country. As if we know next to nothing about the military. We know a lot that we do not talk about. That is a fact. We know a lot that we choose not to talk about so as not to embarrass our country. People need to know this. You can imagine when junior officers are retired and their own bosses, by as many as five years, remain? Oh. Is it healthy? Oh. Now we've been told that they, they resigned. People have suggested that why would they not resign before now? Oh. When everyone clearly had lost faith in their capacity to make progress in the war against terror, for example. The president held on to them, even if they wanted to resign, the body language of the president was opposed to their resignation. Oh. So it's not even the fault of these gentlemen. Most of them, they've even attained their retirement age. That is what I'm saying. If you said you had the power to extend their tenure, the president knew that by tradition, he could only extend their tenure once. Oh. And that tenure elongation that it happened since um, um, two years after they were appointed. Mm. 
He knew that he could not extend it a second time because it has not, never happened. He so just, he just, just kept the so he just kept quiet. He didn't talk about extension, but he just kept quiet. Now there is another angle to it. It's, uh, the attainment of 60 years of age. That one is a public service law. And that was what uh, Ibrahim Shekara was talking about, that leaving them after they've attained the age of 60 is unconstitutional. It's there. So the president once told people close to him that, look, just before the election is not the right time to remove service chiefs. OK. That was 2018. For stability and everything. There's that. Maybe after election, you know, so that at least you keep people who are loyal yeah, to, to you. you. But the elections came. You won the election. 2015, uh, 2019, we election. went past it. 2020, we went past it. You still held on to them? One of them, one of them clocked 60 years since early last year. You held on to them. That's in flagrant disobedience to the, the letters of our constitution. So what we see now, we are going to have new service chiefs. A lot of these guys are people that we already know. People who have served in Operation Lafayette, Adole, and all that. At least three of the new appointees have, at one time or the other, worked there. Either as air component commander of Operation Lafayette, Adole, or even theater commander. Both Irabo and Atahiru had, at one time or the other, been theater commander of Operation Lafayette, Adole. And we have the Nava uh, man. Um, I, um, Gambo, the Kano man, seasoned under uh, war strategist. So you are bringing in these people, they have the competence, no doubt about it. Irabo, clearly one of the best officers that we've ever had. So mm. we want to see what they will do. Let you get their own chance. Yes, a lot of things are really spiraling out of control now. But mm. they have the opportunity now to show what they can bring to the table. It's as simple as that. Instead of just holding on to, to service chiefs as if they don't have uh, what you call KPI. So even <laughs> if their performances decline, you just keep them there just because you have the power to keep them. No, it's not about the power that you have. We recognize that you have that power. But when things begin to go down, because we all suffer when things begin to go down, mm. then it makes sense to use that power for public good. When you look at the, um, dec the, the decline, in terms of security of life and property across the country under the retired service chiefs. And a lot of people said, they've been agitating that, look, this should have happened like three, four years ago. Absolutely, Ayo. Um, only Mr. President can tell why, you know, it took him such a very long time to act. Um, it's, it's not a very good thing that uh, the entire nation has this impression that Mr. President acts only when he's pushed. It's really not very good. You know, it leaves room for a lot of, you know, tardiness. This um, singular act of um, moving the service chiefs, you know, is one that ought to have happened a long time ago because the clamor was, was almost universal across every segment of society. Mm. Except a few you psychophants. And yeah, others. so one wonders why it took you know, such a long time. It was very clear you know, that the, the, the insecurity in the country was, was uh, getting worse. It was very clear across the entire country, from the Northern Belt to the South, to the Southwest, to the Southeast, South and North Central, everywhere. It was very clear, even to, to the blind. Mm. So it's just as well that he has acted. Well, you could say it's, it's never too late. But the fact of the matter is that this is you know, coming at a time that there is a very serious threat to Nigeria, to the survival of Nigeria as a country. Mm. It's, it is an existential re reality. And that threat is there for anyone who is you know, keenly observing our, our, our our political space. So the, the new kids you know, on the block, as it were, have their job you know, truly cut out for them. It's good that these are uh, almost veterans, if you like, who have served you know, uh, 
in the northeast where we have you know the main you know threat to the country's uh, sovereignty you know um, I was reading up stuff about um, uh, Atahiru you know before coming up for this program he, he was um, the one who in 2017 was asked by uh, the now former military chief Burete to produce uh, the, the Boko, Haram, Boko Haram leader, you know, in 40 days, you okay. know, yeah, if you remember, 20, you July in 2017, and then by 20, by end of the year, 2017, you know, he was removed. But these are veterans. Whatever it is that informed their choices, again, is left to Mr. President. But the expectation of Nigerians is that the new, the new service chiefs should, you know, get their loins, get into the field, deliver. Mr. President, if you hadn't done this in the past, we'll have to clearly define what the objectives are. Okay? okay? You just don't put people in positions of authority. You must clearly define what their, you know, um, their deliverables are. And you should be able to measure them, measure them in terms of um, key performance indicators. I mean, that is what is, is globally expected mm -hmm. of Mr. President. We cannot have service chiefs who just, you know, run the show, and then whatever it is that they give, that they return to Nigerians by way of quality of service, we just accept it. Mr. President must realize that the box stops on his table is the commander in chief. And we don't, he, he, he needs to work harder enough not to leave the impression that uh, unless he's pushed, he, he will not do anything. The, the, the crisis that the country you know, is now facing is not one that, that requires Mr. President to adopt a near to don't look approach. You know, the crisis ahead of us are just too terrible. The threat to Nigeria's sovereignty, the, the threat to Nigeria's survival is real. Yeah. It's real. But actually, it's yeah. not, um, we still have some very good commendation in that set, um, the service chiefs. Mm. Some of those guys actually, at a point in time when they started off, they rose to the occasion and even throughout, yeah. we, we, whoever is going to take over from the chief of air staff now, he has a very big shoe to, to, to fill up. Yeah. And even whoever is going to take over from uh, General Burate too, yeah. you know, because at a point in time they give... They've done well, well. I, I, know, I know where you're headed. They've done very well. They've done very well. Some of them had the best service chiefs that we've ever had. I've been saying it since 20, late 2016 that Sadiq Baba Baka is the best Chief of Air Staff that we've ever had. And his achievements are there for everyone to see. Someone who came in and our airplanes were grounded. Mm. The Alpha Jets, for example, had been decommissioned mm. for more than 20 years. And he got them flying again. Got mm. into a uh, contract with, with, the, with the ABU, Zaria, to, to fabricate parts mm. for aircraft. Mm. And those aircraft began to fly again. And no one, no chief of air staff like us, done so much to build capacity the way he has done. You can see even women imagine for the first time as, um, and, uh, as Air Force pilots mm. under him. Fighter jets. Pilots. Fighter jet pilots, uh, ground attack helicopter pilots. Some of them are abroad, tra being trained. So he's done so much. But you can't be there forever. And I keep saying, some of them are my friends. But we just have to tell ourselves the truth. They can't be there forever. At a point, no matter how good you are, diminishing return will begin yes. to set in. Yes. And I once gave the example of the former coach of Morocco, Jose Faria, the Brazilian who led Morocco to the 1986 World Cup. He got them to the second round of the World Cup. It was an, an African record. And they lost narrowly by a last minute free kick by Lotamatos of Germany. Lotamatos. Last minute. So people said, ah, we, we may never achieve this sort of thing. He got to Morocco, treated like the hero that he was. He even became a Muslim. He naturalized. But what happened? Morocco hosted the Nations Cup two years later. And they were eliminated so early in the competition. <laughs> Everyone turned against him. He was booted out in disgrace. So 
you have at a point people may be hailing you, ah, this guy is fantastic, this guy is... But no matter what you have achieved, a time will come when diminishing return begins to set in. And even some of your own officers who, who believe that you've been there for too long, they will not be able, they won't be able to give their best. One thing in the armed forces, the pride of every set that passed through NDA is for to them to produce the chief, the chief of army staff. Chief of, so now look at how many sets oh. have been unable to produce chief of army staff or chief of air staff or chief of naval staff. No set, no set of service chiefs have ever presided over promotion of officers six times. It's unprecedented. Oh. No set, I repeat, no set of service chiefs in our history presided over promotions of officers six times. The first set of promotions that they did was in December of 2015. So by keeping them for too long, we inflicted so much damage on morale without knowing it. Even promoted um, General uh, Shaki as a lieutenant general. So no, General uh, uh, Adi Oshun. Adi Oshun. Adi Oshun. Adi Oshun. Sorry. Sorry, no? as a lieutenant general. Yes. Now, I don't know the fate of Lavida Joshua. Uh, Let's not talk about that, no. Sayo. It's, it's up to them what they choose to do. But at the time when he did it, many people thought, OK, the president will move in, appoint new service chiefs, and move one of the service chiefs to the rank of, chief C of CDS, CDS. Because that's the tradition. You will find a former chief of air staff becoming Chief of, of uh, defense, uh, defense staff. Well, Bassanjo did it a number of times. So, at that point, with Adi Oshun there, some were expected, okay, the, if it pleases the president to move Brate up there, given the hard work that he had put into his job and the discipline that he brought into the army. Because these are our soldiers, they used to run away from battle oh. to the point that even the defense minister of Niger was making fun of us. I remember the, the, the days of tactical maneuvers. No. <laughs> we, are, it, we are getting <laughs> even there now when the army will say that he's left his barrack. You saw the one uh, statement that they issued the other day that they left their barrack tactical uh, this thing, withdraw from their own barracks to go and uh, do uh, what they called um, ambush on the enemy. You leave your barrel and let the enemy destroy it in the name of trying to crush the enemy. <laughs> and then what you called an ambush on the enemy, in the same statement you claimed that it was a fierce battle. By nature, an ambush is a surprise attack on the enemy and it usually does not last long. But let's not go into that because they will say today they will not like them. The <laughs> truth is, these appointments have been made. These are solid officers. For example, the chief of the new chief of air staff has logged in thousands of hours as a, um, an alpha jet pilot, operations man through and through. So, mm. I have confidence that given their experience as operations people, as um, vice marshal Amo, Amo, yes, he was here. And he showed it. Where people who are about to exit the army are usually trained oh, in the settlement the center. center. Okay. I'm sure it was it's hoping that, okay, they will soon retire yeah. me. This must have come to him as a tremendous shock. <laughs> so, this is the <laughs> thing. God is the ultimate decider of things in the events and the lives of men. Hmm. So, looking at the spread, because Nigerians will start reading meanings and interpretations to this thing as usual, but this is a specialized, <laughs> you know, you can't be thinking of, you know, if you don't have them, if you don't have people at the right place, as in terms of in this security, top security work, you can't go and choose from the back because you want to do any ethnic balancing. What do you think? I know there are some very hard realities we can run away from. I choose to look at it from two angles. One, merit. We want to assume that the choices that have been made by Mr. President were indeed you know, driven by you know, choice for the very best. And that's, that's the expectation of Nigerians. And uh, 
of course, as it is very common or traditional with the military, you know, the tendency is always to you know, look at the hierarchy and the next in command and then promote. But we want to believe that excellence must have defined these choices. But the second leg to it, Ayo, is that for those who have argued that the way the Nigerian military is presently structured, that it will be difficult for certain segments of this country to produce leadership, is indeed correct. That's the truth. And some of these things have been done deliberately, strategically, in such a way that... And Jimmy. It, see, the fact that I want to share here is that if you look at the way promotions are done in the services, OK, these are claims that have been made, and they should be tested. And the government owes Nigerians explanation for some of these things, where because you want to strategically place your own person, you go out of your, of your way to manipulate promotions in such a way that it would be difficult for some other people to emerge at the top. These are claims that have been made. And we cannot run away from that reality. And it's not just in the military. Everywhere in the civil service. So Mr. President and his team should be very mindful of this. Because these are some of the things that make you know, um, different stakeholders within the Nigeria project feel that they don't have a sense of belonging. So if you look, in fact, let, let, me, let, me, let, me, be, let me be let me be a, a bit more a bit more direct. Not long ago, I was listening to the Aryan Ariana Kaganfo. You know him, um, Adams, Ghani Adams, saying that, and this is a video that went viral, saying that the way the military, in fact, most most arms of, of, of the military have been structured, that it's going to be difficult in one decade for some segments of the country to produce the, the military hierarchy. That should be tested. No, he, These he, are claims that have been made. He has no, he has not got the facts to say that. Let no, me but, tell you, yes. based on the knowledge of the military that I know, these appointments are political. If that's what you are saying, yes. You see, people are promoted. They will all get to that rank because the, the, the uh, promotion is by, um, how do I even describe it? You get into the army the same time, and you get promoted along the way, the same way. There are many, um, from the East, for example, we've not, since he had left, we've mm. not produced a chief of army staff. Mm. But apart from Burate and Adi Oshun, we have major generals, dozens and dozens of major generals, mm. and Easterners are amongst them. If we are talking about, okay, I'm not, in, I'm not in particular about Islam. No, no, but, but the way you are talking, people will start thinking that that's the Yeah, thing. because I have, I have... I'm saying that promotions, yes. the way it is in the army, yes. you know, when, the, when you get to the army, you move. You say, okay, 35th course. People can, if you remain in the army, you're on the 35th course, they can accurately guess your current rank. Because mm -hmm. what happens is, if there are, some, there are some ranks in the army, like Lieutenant Colonel, if you have stayed there for some years and you don't get promoted, they, you, uh, you, maybe you don't us. pass your exam or something, you, could be, you, you have to go. But if you remain along with your colleagues for that number of years, for those num uh, the, that number of years, it could be anybody. then you will be as high as they are. They have many, but, the, but when it comes to appointments, you could be overlooked. But not that people won't get to the highest rank. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Because yeah. people yeah. know that Major General is currently, outside of those two guys, Major General is the highest rank. And the Chief of Army Staff was the only one who was Lieutenant General. Of course, you are not going to be higher than your boss. But there are so many other people are there as Major Generals. But it is the President's prerogative no, to no. choose he, who he wanted. When no. Obasanjo was Head of State, the, the far not, as it is called, never produce a service chief. This is the truth. He kept looking in the direction of northern minorities and other. He never. It was the, when Yaradua became local. yes. It was when Yaradua became president that he made a house full and a person the chief of army staff. That's the man who was our uh, minister of interior the other day. Yeah, Dam, uh, Dambazo. So these things. Yes, this no, is the way our no. country is. But the point that Ghani mm. made, 
okay. that people may not be able to get to a rank. It's not exactly correct. People may be overlooked. That is the which, point. Which, which, is, which, which is what's here. You know, political. What, mm. what I will concede to here, basically, is that, like you, you pointed out, these are going to be driven essentially by political motives. Of course. Yeah. Of course. It's okay. a political appointment. And, and, and those, those motives are what is raising a lot of you know, questions, a lot of concerns you know, within the polity. Do we truly appreciate that in terms of balancing, delicate balancing? Well, then let, the, let the National Assembly do its work, because right now, they must take them before the National Assembly, or like before. Of course, they're going to be... So yes, 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 that law, after we won that case in court, the, now you must take them. So no, but you think that there is going to be a no to any no, of these no, uh, propositions? No, let them, no, do, their no, their work. Difficult. Let them do their work. You know, is that okay. political element that is raising the dust within the, within the country? Okay, we'll take this break. When we come back, we'll talk more. So, John, stand up. Stay with us. Yes, thank you for staying with us. Nigeria's governors have agreed with leaders of the Etiala Cattle Breeders Association to resolve the lingering issues that led to clashes between farmers and herders in the southwest region. In a peace meeting held in Ondo State on Monday, the governors, backed by Governor Oluwaruti Makeredolu's back Governor Oluwaruti Makeredolu's position on ban on open night grazing and insisted that herders must register with state government. Meanwhile, the Minister of Information, Lai Mohamed, said armed forces killed more than 150 bandits across the country this month following the re-energizing of the nation's security arrangements. He said troops arrested 52 criminal elements while scores of arms and ammunition and equipment were recovered. Lai Mohamed is um, talking about the achievement of this administration and um, talking about the previous service chiefs now saying that 150 bandits are across the country. That means the numerical strength of these bandits across the country is multiplying. Well, those guys, it's even looking like everybody is a bandit now <laughs> because there are so many, there are so many, and any um, human endeavor where you are guaranteed tons of cash for even little effort, you mm. find so many people getting involved mm. in it. Not even these boys rubbish. have colonized a lot of our forests, and this. When we talk about kidnapping and all that, we are not exaggerating. We are not exaggerating. Even in a town called Ife, Ife is very close to my hometown in Kogi State. They kidnapped people who went for one year remembrance of the former PDP state chairman for Kogi. Kidnapped about 13 of them. No one knows that they are whereabouts now. And that's in a state where we know that the governor is doing exceptionally well in the area of security. Yet these guys are only lenting. Bandits are bent on um, imposing their own government on the rest of us. And the earlier we crush them, the better. better. Because there is no, all uh, efforts to placate them have failed. The only way to go about this is to destroy them. These guys, they, they don't deserve to live. Oh. It's as simple as that. If you are uh, kidnapped and you paid ransom and you are released, then you are lucky. Sometimes you pay ransom and they and still you take your them. life. Yeah. That's what they do. So that's the reason they do not deserve to live. They are all over the place. A lot of them masquerading as um, headsmen. Uh, you see them, you think, oh, these are uh, headsmen. They've graduated from headsmen to pure criminals. That's what they are. And they move from the most extreme part of the country down south to operate. This is what is happening. Look at what uh, the Seriki Fulani of Gongon uh, said. He never said that uh, people uh, were not. People of his own tribe were not being arrested. But he said they were not their own uh, people living in that town. 
that they came all the way from Kebi. It's there in that BBC interview that the man said. He admitted. So how suddenly people just took to kidnapping our country is what I don't understand. We've got to find a way to solve this problem instead of arguing whether in 2015 things were better or uh, the, uh, people will talk about now. It's not people's business what happened in the past. The past is gone. It's water under the bridge. People are interested in now. Now. What do we do to solve the problem? We are not interested in debate. And we have service chiefs now, new service chiefs. We should give us a new impetus in this war. With these new service chiefs, new ideas, new energy, you know, new inventiveness, should come with it. That's the challenge. Ooh. That we should give these new service chiefs. And they must respect their chief of defense staff. Not only that, the new service chiefs must respect the national security advisor. Ooh. I've had the national security advisor face the Senate and say that service chiefs were not taking his instructions. To not take the instruction of the uh, national security advisor is irresponsible with the experience that the man has. We're just wasting him. Yes, many people in our country don't like to rock the boat. But why should we have a national security advisor when um, uh, Baba Guso was chief of, I mean, was an NSA? Was that the way he was disrespected? Mm -mm. Eh? Top spy. Top spy respected <laughs> abroad. Was that the way they treated him? Top person. No, we, we, synergy must improve. I want to believe that these current service chiefs will respect their CDS and the joint operations, which are by, by, by nature the responsibility of the CDS, will happen a lot under the current dispensation. Irabo has no choice but to succeed. Otherwise, people will turn against him. And no amount, when Nigerians turn against you, no amount of paid propaganda can save the armed forces. They must realize that. Atahiro was one time spokesman uh, for, 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 for the army. During, um, I think, during Jonathan's time. Oh, the chief of army? Yes. He was, he was a spokesman. He knows the point that I'm making. Yeah. Once there's decline in your work, even if you engage all the propagandists in this world, oh. it, they mm. won't be able to uh, change the perception that people have. Oh. I think this is a lesson that must be learned from the outgoing set of service chiefs. But people are interpreting it as if um, the Minister of Information is saying that Nigeria is safer now than before 2015. Yeah, but that's the point that's been made. That is needless, you know, comparing, you know, what the facts were in 2015 and what the facts, you know, are at the, at the moment. In fact, if one, if one is to do, you know, um, an objective, um, an objective assessment yeah. of, of, what is, of what is happening, People will tell you, take me back to what life was all about in the yes. last uh, five years. Mm. So I, I don't think that the minister, uh, you know, does himself and the government any good by drawing attention to what mm. obtained, you know, some, some five years ago. We're talking about the realities of today. Yeah. And we're saying that at, at the risk of sounding, you know, um, uh, too loud, that even the blind could see. People can feel it. Mm -hmm. There's insecurity almost all over the place. They can't travel around yeah. the way they like. And I just said that this country is facing an existential reality. The, this, the sovereignty of this nation is threatened. That's the truth. And those who say that we're almost uh, nearing the state of uh, Somalia is, is, are, are not too far from it. <laughs> so we shouldn't. There's really no basis. I mean, the reason we asked the Jonathan administration to leave was because we felt that they were not doing enough. Well, but security. here you are. Mm -hmm. you, had the, you have the mandate. You still have the mandate. And you have three years to go, as it were. And you are reminding us of what happened in 2015. It's absolute nonsense, as far as I'm concerned. We are not interested we need, in We need to confront the realities of today. Gide just spoke about the new structure that we have at the military level. There are very high expectations. We don't expect Mr. President to just you know, allow the people to do whatever they like. No. We expect him, even if he doesn't understand. There are people who are very close to him, who are his advisors, who 
understand what KPIs are, what deliverables are, yes. what it means to sit down over, over you know, um, strategy sessions. I mean, I, I, work, I work in an environment where at the beginning of every year or towards the end of every year, I'm asked to come and pro uh, propose what I want to do for mm, the next, next year mm. and what I'll do in terms of timelines. So what would be the timelines for the new guys who are, who are, man who are going to manage our security? Those are the kind of things we expect at the level of strategy. So for Mr. Lai Mohammed, like Jide said, there's no, there's no level of propaganda. Once the realities are there and people can feel it, mm. if you like spend Try billions you know, into promotions, mm -hmm. you, you won't get any results. Mm. So we've got to, got to be careful the way we deploy the you know, our communication, is not communication on strategies. The average mm. Nigerian is not on Twitter. But they can yeah. see, they can feel they it. They can feel it. That village mm. that I'm talking about. They can feel it. What is the uh, level of teledensity in that area? How many people have phones? But if people are being picked on their streets routinely, of course, they will be able to relate with that reality. They don't have to be on social media. It's not everyone that's on social media. It's not everyone. Mm. So if propaganda is targeted, are trying to change people's perception on social media. That would be difficult. Then. It's just a few people that it can change. For example, for some of us now, it does not work. And there are many people like me that you cannot, once yes. they've made up their mind that this is the way it is, you can't tell them, like Charles Dickens in his book, that black is white and, and white, uh, <laughs> black is white and white is black. No. It's not everyone that you, 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 you can. Your work will speak for it. People will see manifestly the work that you have done. We've credited mm. this government with strides, giant strides in infrastructure. Infrastructure that was not there. Infrastructure that was not renewed for up to 40 years. For example, in the mm. power sector. Mm. The, you know? Mm. But in terms of security, rail. in, in, yes, rail transport. The work that they, they are doing in Itapway and all that, that was abandoned for 30 years. You've got to give them credit for that. Lagos but on, on security, yes, Lagos Badon, though it was Jonathan that started it, they, too, they, they are taking it uh, further. Um, Second Niger Bridge, again, the former administration started it, taking it further. They completed the uh, Kaduna Abuja uh, rail project, and we began to use it. People can't forget what they have done. Buhari has been so wise that he refused to, to start new projects. He decided to complete the ones that he inherited. He will get greater credit than the people who didn't finish it. But right. on the area of, in the area of security, yeah. we will tell him the truth, that there is a lot left undone, that we need to be better protected in our country at this time than we are facing currently, because we all sure. face a clear and present danger. True. You can you can go on even on Lagos and Express where you could be picked up. Those extras were picked up there. So this is the thing, and it was not like that before. For some of us, we enjoy traveling. In the past, we enjoy traveling. Traveling is no longer fun. You first no, think no, no, it's not. that oh, if you go by road, you know that there was a marriage in Ibadan here, not uh, sometime much. last year. When I met and, and the, some the staff were staff of a bank, they said that they had several meetings before they decided that they should attend the, the marriage. Meanwhile, it was their colleague. So that's to tell you how terrified. So people who are afraid of traveling between Lagos and Ibadan, would they ever venture to go up north? So that is the dilemma that we face. And these service chiefs must work with synergy because that was lacking in the other administration, in the former, among the former service chiefs. Mm. The, the, there was lack of synergy. Some of them will never even pray in the same mosque. Hmm. What a shame. Yes. Hmm. A huge shame. I hope it, this kind of, that kind of nonsense will not happen uh, with these ones. Hmm. The, the needless rivalry where people are dying. Why would you not want to pray in the same mosque? Why would you feel threatened by one another that much? The synergy has to be top notch. That's the only way we can win. When the Air Force and the Army are working in tandem, everyone will see the results. May Nigeria succeed. Apologies to Fumi Adewola. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, moving on now. There's uneasy calm in the Nigerian judiciary over the 
alleged lack of transparency in the latest selection of some justices in the Court of Appeal. While some people are calling for an outright cancellation of the appointment of justices into the Court of Appeal, conducted by the Federal Judicial Service Council, FJSC, others are asking President Buhari to rectify the injustice done in the selection process, just like he did during the fraudulent selection of judges to the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, High Court recently. When would the Judicial Commission find this elusive fairness? Now, Babajide, I don't know, what's this agitation for? Appointment of judges into the Federal High Court? You know, Nigerian politicians, are among the greediest in the world. Greedy for virtually everything. They want to corner everything. And they always find people they can use within the government. Oh. Ah, this person is not lawyer. Oh, no, no, no. Let's, let's sidetrack competence. Oh. Let's put this fellow. Oh. You see? Once there is a lack of transparency in the selection of judges, then you can't have um, judicial independence in the real sense. The executive shouldn't meddle in the choice of judges. It's a separate arm of Let the judiciary by itself bring forward judges to the court of appeal, judges to fill vacancies, either as a, 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 a head of courts and all that. Mm -hmm. But increasingly, we are seeing interference mm -hmm. by the executive, goaded by politicians. And the whole idea of uh, um, um, transparency and ethical journalists being, I mean, ethical judges, being produced by this kind of selection process is, is a waste of time because the politicians are bent on having their own people. And some of the people that we know are choices of politicians, they are not competent, even as lawyers. They never, they never grew through the ranks as competent law people. So this is the problem. You see how sometimes somebody is qualified, somebody is the most senior to assume a position. Politicians will want to stop that person on account of religion. And other silly things like, oh, the husband is from another <laughs> state. Oh, he can't use the quota, quota of this state. Silly things. You watch that person grow, grow, grow until it's she got to the position and then you are now citing the state of the husband. Meanwhile, she had always walked there and rose through the ranks mm. in that state. Mm. So you ask yourself, why are our politicians like this? Mm. There has to be a sort of template by which judicial officers are evaluated. Mm. You know, whether we are even using quota system or not, mm. from every state, from every geopolitical zone, it should be the most qualified that emerges, not simply the choice of some, some um, uh, politicians who are extremely selfish, who do not care for the nation. They only care about themselves. This is the point that we are making. We are not talking um, um, about individuals now. No, that's not the issue. But if the MBA, as it is now, is concerned, the merit is being sidetracked in the choice of judges to go to the court of appeal, then every one of us should be bothered because that's the future of justice in our country is under threat. That's how, that's why the judiciary self must stand firm and these politicians, these selfish politicians must be called to order. That look, stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Don't meddle in the appointment of judges. Because that's a different harm of government. 
Judges don't mention, meddle in um, uh, what the executive does. So why are politicians merits. Uh, 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 trying to uh, uh, cause merit to be sidetracked mm. for people who have no business even getting that far in the first place to, to, to be appointed? Sam, the judiciary and you know the way the judiciary is is not something that should just be tampered with politics. No, but once you do, then we, we can't truly say that um, uh, we are in a democratic dimension. Because democracy starts basically on, on three pedestals, the executive, the judiciary, and, and the legislature. Once you, you make the other arms of government become very vulnerable, and those who are drivers of the system cannot you know, uh, freely or independently, you know, uh, um, uh, make contributions, then the, the entire system collapses. There is really no alternative to, to entrainment of merit and excellence in, 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 in our recruitment, select, I mean, uh, uh, selection processes. There's really no alternative. If you embark on a system that allows you to throw in garbage, then what you're going to get out of it is going to be garbage. It's garbage in, garbage out. Yeah. And a lot has been said. And we have, we have separately faced embarrassment, even beyond our shores, where you know, uh, some judicial officers you know, have had recommendations made you know, uh, concerning them to some global organizations. And they were all returned as, as not competent enough. Yes. That, 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 yes. should be, yes. that should be very embarrassing. Mm. You know, so that was the first time I'm hearing that. Because we that should send Nigeria, judges to yeah, Gambia that to that many Nigerian Commonwealth countries. That was recommended for a mm. top position mm. somewhere outside our shores. He's on a judicial off. officer. And um, he was returned as, as incompetent. He's people on hard like of. Bola, so, Jibola, the two allies of those two others. Yes, I know it's, it's disturbing. So, like I said, it's, it's garbage in, garbage out. I would think that these things don't, don't matter. At the end of the day, it is not just the judiciary that is rubbish, but the entire political system is rubbish. And then we are looking at, 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 at the center. This same rubbish happens even at the state levels, where our governors want to determine who becomes, you know, a, who becomes a, a, mm -hmm. whatever. And then GD talked about recruit, recruitment. You have the acronyms all over the place, sometimes family members. If you remember, not long ago, there were stories about how you know, uh, sons and daughters of uh, some very senior judicial officers were being recommended as, as magistrates all over the place. Yes. I mean, recently we, we saw what happened in, uh, is it Akwa Ibom? Or mm. Cross River? I'm not, I'm not so sure. Mm. The Cross River. Mm. You know, where magistrates had to, just imagine, just imagine that. It's, it's a shame. What mm. it simply means is that within that territory, mm. you don't have a judiciary that can comfortably mm. stand up for itself. No, yeah. it doesn't exist. Yeah. Because, I mean, you had, you know, a, judi a, 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 a judicial, I mean, a commission that mm. just sat idly by and was watching what was happening to mm. its, its members. It never happened anywhere. You know, even this, thing, that, this thing has even mm. achieved, even the quality of judges in the, in the uh, apex court. Yeah. Yeah. In those days, you remember how we used to talk about a uh, show? Justice Ricky Tobish. Talk, uh, <laughs> talk about Chukwu the Fool Puta. Mm -hmm. Fantastic you know, jurist. Mm -hmm. Talk you, about you uh, Nili Kefe. You can't say there anymore. Because even Fred Anya Iguna. Landmark mm -hmm. judgments. Mm -hmm. Anya Golu. Mm -hmm. And Tony Anya Golu. Not anymore. Mm -hmm. How Not many anymore. on your, your fingertips? How you, many erudite Supreme Court judges can, can you call at this name? time? No. The quality, the quality of erudition is eroded because we have allowed politics mm. to, to override com competence, yes. scholarship, courage, yes. transparency, yes. and judicial intelligence. Yes. Because it's that judicial intelligence mm. that enables you, even mm. in a split second, mm. to take the best decision. Mm. Because every judge must have that judicial intelligence. You know when... Um, an accused person standing before you is about to con you. Oh. But if we keep sidetracking competence, oh. sidetracking transparency, tra sidetracking scholarship, we will not have the judiciary of our dream. Oh. We will not be able to talk about the current judicial officers 
current men on the on the uh, on the Supreme Court and even the uh, federal I mean the, the the Court of Appeal as people who are very scholarly mm. people that when you pick copies of their judgment mm. you see elevated language mm. that you can recommend to people mm. that you will read like a test meant mm. to also elevate you as a person i mean look at the way sans for example senior advocate of nigerians emerge it's fairly transparent we are not going to say everybody the, uh, is top notch or something like that. But at least we should have something like that in terms of the emergence of judges to our courts, judges as heads of courts, judges as heads, uh, uh, as, as uh, uh, court of appeal judges. Mm. The interference of the politicians has to stop. Look at what Bukola Saraki did in Kwara, Justice Elelu, the chief judge. He changed the woman away. The woman eventually won the case. But by the time that the case was decided, it it's was already uh, too, uh, okay. too late. So the bulk of the time, exercise. The bulk mm. of the time that mm. she should have spent, Bukola made sure that the woman... No, the intention was to so frustrate her. Simple. Yes. You know, just yeah. allow the case drag in such a way so, that by the time she ends up... Uh, you know, maybe just a few is, days or yeah, no, no time at all. So mm. that is the thing. Mm -hmm. the politicians. Everywhere. Mm. Something is wrong with our politicians. Mm. Gentlemen, I want to thank you. Sam Ibimere, thank you for your contribution today. Thank and Bikyo, thank you for your contribution. Thanks. And that's our offering today. Join us tomorrow for another episode of the program. I'm Ayodili Ozubakun. Bye for now and God bless Nigeria.